Look, when Peter Dutton became the new leader of the Liberal Party, the critics were out in force. He lacked charisma. He wouldn't be able to relate to people outside Queensland. Well, I'll tell you something. It's in our own interests to start listening to what Dutton is saying about this critical and potentially economically destructive issue of the 43% emissions reduction target by 2030, about to be enshrined in law. The Energy Minister Bowen is now running around in circles trying to reach his target of 82% of electricity to come from renewable sources in fewer than eight years. When do we describe this as self-sabotage? When we are a raw materials powerhouse and therefore should be a cheap energy powerhouse instead of bending the knee to Paris and the United Nations who have no interest whatever in our economic well-being. I have repeated over and over again the words of Morris Strong, the discredited godfather of climate change, who said in 1992, that's how long this nonsense has been going on, and I quote, we may get to the point where the only way of saving the world will be for industrialised civilization to collapse. Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? 1992. When do we wake up? Christine Stewart, the former Canadian Minister for the Environment, said, quote, no matter if the science of global warming is all phony, climate change provides the greatest opportunity to bring about equality and justice in the world, unquote. Christina Figueres of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change said in February 2014 in Brussels, quote, this is the first time in the history of mankind that we are setting ourselves the task of intentionally, within a defined period of time, changing the economic development model that's been reigning for at least 150 years since the Industrial Revolution, unquote. Ottmar Edenhofer is a German economist regarded as one of the world's leading experts on climate change policy. He said of the Climate Change Summit in 2010, the 2010 version of last year's Glasgow, quote, basically, it's a big mistake to discuss climate policy separate from major themes of globalisation. The Climate Summit in Cancun, this was 2010 in Mexico, the Climate Summit in Cancun at the end of the month is not a climate conference, but one of the largest economic conferences since the Second World War. He said, one has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy anymore. This is about wealth transformation, unquote. Look, I guarantee Paris to peanuts that people like Albanese and Bowen, a lot of them, have never read anything by Edenhofer or Figueres. Yet embark on this policy of self-sabotage and to support them, endless emotional speeches, protests, yes, media editorials and the big woke corporates fall into line. A UN-sponsored redistribution of wealth is the climate change agenda. China's got no intention of shutting down its coal-fired power stations and replacing them with weak, intermittent wind and solar. They want energy security and through it, national wealth and through that, military power. Energy is the lifeblood of every nation. China is leaving the West for dead. Peter Dutton enters the fray by rightly saying that by legislating emission targets, radical activists will be able to use the courts to seek legal interpretation of what the statute means in order to shut down everything from cattle farms to road upgrades on the basis of climate change.